Yo, what it do, Hustle Nation? Y'all know what time it is. It is Friday, 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. So y'all know what that means. It's time for the Cortez Hustle Show, our special Black Economic Empowerment uh, edition, where we really dive in on things that affect uh, the culture in a particular way. Today, I have a special guest on talking about the arts, man, and why is there such a thing as a starving artist? We know some of the, uh, our artists are some of the most talented people on the planet, uh, and yet some of them struggle financially and the monetization aspects of their art. So we're going to be talking about that in uh, full detail with a very, very special guest that I'm going to introduce you guys to uh, here in a second. Do me a favor. As you guys are coming into the room, go ahead and comment in the chat where you're from. Also drop the name of your business and or your brand. would love to give you a free shout out. Just don't post any links, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but in addition to our special guest talking about monetizing your art, monetizing your gift, this is especially for artists of any discipline. If you're a photographer, if you are a sculptor, if you are a painter, a writer, and you're struggling to monetize your gifts, you definitely want to tune in to this episode. In fact, you want to tag all the artists that you know in this episode and go ahead and smash that share button uh, and get those other artists involved because there's no reason for artists to be struggling or what they call starving artists with all of that uh, talent. Uh, we're also going to talk about um, uh, towards the end of the show, if you stick around, I'm going to give you my four reasons that I love video marketing and why you should be using video marketing in your business. So comment in the chat where you're from, drop the name of your business and or your brand. If you are an artist, let us know which discipline, what is your art? And uh, let us know if you're struggling with anything because you, you definitely want to uh, engage with today's episode. So y'all know what it is, man. I'm going to run my disclaimer real quick, and then we're going to come back and officially start the show. So y'all make sure y'all keep it locked right here. The Cortez Hustle Show is a copyrighted production of iHustle Media Group. Any unauthorized use of the video, audio, captions, depictions of this show without express written consent of iHustle Media Group is strictly prohibited. iHustle Media Group, a better way to market. And now back to the Cortez Hustle Show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Course S Hustle Show. Uh, and today's episode is brought to you by STL Black Biz, the premier directory for black businesses in the St. Louis metro area. Ladies and gentlemen, if you uh, are conscious about where and how you spend your dollars and you want to make sure that those dollars circulate in and throughout our communities, then you want to go to stlblackbiz.com favorite that site so that you can always get back to it, but you will find a plethora of black owned businesses, high quality services and products that you can support and show some love to our community. Because when you shop with a black owned business, you're not just buying a product. You're helping to put one of our own through college. You're helping to put food on the table for people in and through our community. So it goes way bigger than just a product or service. So shout out to my girl, Eliani Campbell. Go over to stlblackbiz.com and make sure you bookmark that site uh, and look at the businesses that are there. I'm sure we have something for you uh, every step of the way. And then let me say this, if you own a black business, you need to go there and get yourself listed. Uh, it's a small fee for the whole year. Get yourself listed so when people are looking to consciously spend money with Black-owned businesses, they will find you there, stlblackbiz.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the distinct honor and privilege and pleasure of introducing um a very, very talented artist, but he's also very creative in some of the things that he's put together to monetize his talents. Let's see, uh, Brandon, uh, business name is She Enterprise uh, from Brayton, Bradenton, Florida. Uh, welcome to the stream this morning. 
So this young man uh, has, has literally, uh, let me just bring up his bio. Uh, Michael E. Allen is a photographer and serial entrepreneur. He runs a photography company called A Sharp Photo that specializes in plus size boudoir. I think I said that right. He is the owner of UmbrellaStock.com, uh, the largest black owned stock imagery company. And he co-owns Ghost Readers Inc. with his wife. And they provide voice services and narrated books for black authors. Michael's work is focused uh, on proper representation of black life and the accurate telling of our narrative. So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce to some and present to others, my good friend, Mr. Miche Allen. What's going on, brother? How you doing this morning? I'm good, how you doing, Mr. Hustle? I am doing extremely well, man. Glad to have you on the show. Uh, this is this is one of the things that I am extremely passionate about as uh, my company, uh, Thornton Online Marketing, is all about uh, helping um, everyday working Americans grow their finances with an emphasis on entrepreneurship. And my foundational material is a book that I've written called Monetize My Life. It's four nice. incredibly simple ways to profit from your passion with little to no startup costs. And I think uh, when I saw what you were doing and I said, man, this is somebody who understands uh, monetizing one's gifts, talents and uh, expertise. So really quickly, do me a favor, man. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself, your background. How did you get started in the photography industry? And uh, give us a quick rundown of Miche Allen. Indeed. Indeed. Well, first of all, I want to give a shout out to uh, Terry Mayhills because I'm in Florida, too. So shout out to beautiful weather year round. <laughs> nice. But yeah, so um, I actually so I normally say I started um, being a photographer in 2012, but that's not actually true. Um, I've pretty much always had a camera in my hand. I um, and I, I never thought about it. I never knew it was a thing. But like I, matter of fact, I found one of my first pictures I took the other day. I took a um, a photography class over the summer in middle school, and when mm -hmm. I was in middle school. Oh Lord, sound old. But it was a it was a dark room. It was dark room stuff. Like we shot it mm -hmm. on film and they taught us how to develop it and everything. So ever since then, like I've always been the guy with the camera. Like, you know, I'm I'm sure you you might be in a Facebook group with uh people you graduated from high school with. Mm -hmm. I'm the guy with all the pictures. I actually <laughs> still have pictures that I can post from high school because my dad bought me a camera. Um, my senior year in high school and every organization I was in, I always had the camera, you know? So what happened was in 2012, uh, my wife and I used to work with foster kids and we had an assistant who'd gone to school for photography. So she saw my interest and she gave me all the textbooks and I ate up all of those. And she was like, listen, here's my camera and all my gear. You can have it. You love it more than I do at this point. And wow. It was off to the races from there. So, um, you know, of course, with photography, it's kind of a it's an open field when you start and then you narrow it and you discover what you have a passion for, what you like as you go mm -hmm. along. So um, I've pretty much put myself into the space of uh, plus size boudoir. So like I'm the only plus size certified photographer on the planet. And so so that's my space. But of course, I can shoot anything. And then once I did that, oddly enough, um, I was in a situation where I have a friend who does uh, background vocals for a lot of gospel artists. So mm -hmm. she would ask me, hey, can you come take pictures for me? And I'm like, of course, I can take them, you know, but I I um, I sell stock imagery. So I was like, mm -hmm. as long as I can use it for me. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do what you want. So went took the pictures and then when i submitted it to the stock company they were like no um you need a um a, a, a press release you know in order or a press pass in order to use these images i'm like well press pass it was a pastor's anniversary there is no press pass what are you talking <laughs> it's, about it's a church event it's, it's function yeah there's, there's nothing there. <laughs> exactly so then my business coach dave anderson was like why don't you just build your own stock company so that way, no one can tell you which pictures you can and can't use. 
So, mm -hmm. so there we are. And in addition to the fact that, yes, I want to use the images I want to use, I also want to paint the picture of black life that we know to be true as opposed yeah. to the picture that the media normally paints, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's yeah. important, man. And, and I appreciate it. Shout out to Dave Anderson, man. Hey, you got to plug me, man. He got to be on the show. He, he's, he's an amazing guy. I've seen some of his work, oh. some of his videos and things of that nature, but I don't know him uh, that well. And you said a couple things uh, that I want to piggyback on, uh, starting back when you said you took a photography class over the summer in middle school. I think people miss how important it is to get children involved in a variety of things when they're young, uh, because you never know what sticks, right? right? Was that something that your your parents had to drag you to, or was that something that you were excited about? No, it was just summer school, and I was like, "Huh, that looks interesting," you know. And and that's the same actually now. So, and forgive me, I know everybody's in, in different places with this, but I am not the guy that's like. You got to go to college. I'm actually mm -hmm. trying to figure out what my kids are into now and mm -hmm. get into that now. Because it's one thing if you're 25 and you decide you want to be a programmer. And another thing, if you're 12 and you got nothing but time yes. and you learn to yes. be a programmer. So I'm trying to narrow that stuff down. It's like, what do you love? What do you like? Let's feed you all of that you can and let's work on that now, you know? Yeah, that, that's huge because people miss just like the time value of money. The earlier you start with investing in those things and understanding those principles, the better off you'll be. Well, it's the same thing with anything in yeah. life. The earlier you get started uh, in anything, if you got a passion or propensity for something and, and you, you, you got an itch for something, man, you, I often say when it comes to school, especially school age, that's one of the fastest ways to get kids to really learn some of this high level stuff like the high level mathematics and that kind of stuff. Yeah. If you show me how to build a robot and you say, well, Cortez, to really get good at building robots, you're really going to have to master algebra, trigonometry, calculus and those things. Guess what? I'm going to master those things. Yeah. But if you say, Cortez, you need to learn this stuff to graduate. I'm like, I ain't that excited about <laughs> that stuff, right. right? The other thing that you said, and, and, and you might be able to speak to this from your position, and do me a favor, guys, if you guys are coming into the room, continue to uh, comment where you're from. Let us know if you already have a business and or brand, uh, and then smash that share button, guys. Anthony Nunez, I see you on YouTube. I appreciate you, my brother. Listen, you also said something else that was key. You said as you were doing this stuff, your business coach mentor gave you a piece of advice to build your own thing is that something that you see that a lot of artists do not have is a business coach to help them develop monetization strategies 100 percent. so when you're an artist what happens is people see your art and say man you're really good at that you could make money doing that so you say well, I never thought of that. And you go to employ your art to make money and business, and then you hit a brick wall. And what you don't realize, so when you go to college, which you know Howard Gantt says college is over overrated, I, I agree 100 percent But when you go to college, you see all these majors, right? Mm -hmm. Um, one of the majors is business, another is marketing, another is advertising. These are whole schools of thoughts, disciplines all to themselves. Yet mm -hmm. you think that you can, because you're a sculptor, that you can just walk in and do it. It's something you got to learn, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, I, and one thing that's really frustrating and, and you got to figure it out is it's not about how good you are. As artists, we spend a lot of time trying to be great at the art and do that. I'm not saying don't do that. But what mm -hmm. we do is we spend time trying to be really good at our craft, but not time trying to learn how to run a business. So then you're really good and everybody knows it, but you don't know how to sell anything or make any money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is, that is huge, man. Um, that that, that it, It's huge in business in general that you have two sides. You have the operation side and then you have the, the financial side. But I think for the arts, because you are because it's your creation 
and there is such a high level of love of what you put into this. Um, and, and there's not a lot of artists don't want to. Uh, uh, I, I think one of the reasons artists are starving because I, I hear a lot of artists say, I don't really want to make money off this. I just do it because I love it. And I'm like, <laughs> so if you don't want to make the money off of it, that's fine. And that's not the sole purpose. That's why uh, Gary Vaynerchuk talks a lot about artists should have a business partner. Right. You don't want to do the sales. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do the marketing. You don't want to ask for the money. That's fine. Put somebody on your team that will, because two things that I know historically happens for, for, for artists, they either underprice their works and they're giving it away for free or they overprice their works because they have such a love for them. They don't put the right value on it. So mm -hmm. now I want way too much for it and nobody ever buys or right. I, I undervalue it and I'm basically giving it away. Uh, have you thought about or do you have a business partner or do you yourself take it up on yourself to learn the sales and the business and the money side of business? So, and, and like I said, I still have a coach. Dave is still mm -hmm. my coach. So we um, we actually have a, a think tank and we meet regularly and bounce ideas around, you know, so mm -hmm. there's some learning that I do on my own, but then there's also a whole business support, you know, that I have. And, you know, I'm in a couple of business groups where I listen to people. Um, I read books, you know what mm -hmm. I mean, about advertising and about business, you know, because it's at the end of the day, um, I'm responsible for all the people in this house and I got to make stuff happen, you know, so. Right. Yeah. right. Love it. Love it. Love it. And, and you did something that I thought was so creative. Now, in the world of photography, and I've been fortunate enough to have a couple photo shoots and I understand how when you're doing these photo shoots, you're taking hundreds of pictures sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And most artists, those hundreds of pictures, uh, after we narrow down the 10 that I like, right? <laughs> what happens to the rest of those pictures, right? And then right. sometimes some of the most creative things in that photo shoot or from that photo shoot are the things that are out of focus. And that stuff gets thrown away, but you found a creative way to leverage those things. Talk about the thought process. I know your coach uh, uh, kind of helped you through this, but uh, creating the stock website, which I think is brilliant because as a content creator myself, uh, I'm always looking for images that represent us well. And it's kind of hard to find us on a traditional right. stock uh, uh, image site. So talk about the thought process and how has it been going for you? And I know uh, you got a special call to action to get some help with that as well. Yeah. Um, so the, the idea, like you say, you know, oftentimes you just have a hard time finding regular stuff. And part of the problem is, so, so this is my, 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 my theory. I could be totally wrong, but this is my theory. Most mm -hmm. photographers are men, right? Um, a lot of male photographers like to um, take pictures of pretty women, right? Mm -hmm. So you generalize that into the black community, same deal. Most photographers, black men, taking pictures of pretty women. And then, so then you end up with, yeah, but I, I need a picture of somebody sewing, you know what I mean? Right. Or I just need a picture of a black man with his child or, or something like that, you know, and you can't find that stuff because nobody's shooting that. So it's like, mm -hmm. we gotta, or even, yeah, look at this last picture. Uh, what does that say? Um, abstract, like yeah. textures, you know yeah. what I mean? Sometimes you need something to put, um, on a, you know, on a website or something like if you got a black background, you could take something like that and then bring the mm -hmm. opacity down and then that switches things up for you, you know? Yeah. But yeah, this I mean, look at right here, man. This this look at right here. I <laughs> I'm gonna buy this and use this. I love it because it's got space over here for a nice quote. Uh, I, I'm you're probably exactly. gonna see this in some of my content here. Very Listen, soon. <laughs> this is one of my biggest selling images, and <laughs> it's nothing necessarily special. Literally, mm -hmm. my son was laying on the floor, and I took a picture of him. And right. that picture sells almost every day, you know. And like I say, <laughs> that, that 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 space to the left of him is intentional, 
It's copy yeah. space. That's the point. That's right. So there's a like you can have fun. Like I love the fact that um uh Thanksgiving is coming up. So now mm -hmm. I can take great pictures of food and family and fun and even Christmas decorations. Like there's it's an easy way to get like stock imagery. Um is one, it's passive income. You know, any right. money you can make while you sleep, I love that. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, and then wow. it's it's not you can lean into it and do it intentionally, but you can also um um you can also uh just kind of get things on the fly. Like if you know you're going somewhere or you know you're doing something and something interesting or cool is gonna be there, you bring your camera, you take that. So yeah, absolutely. Um and and as much as it because I'm a photographer, this began with me leaning heavily into um recruiting photographers to be contributors, but mm -hmm. I had a project um, maybe a month or so ago and I needed black clip art and I couldn't find it. I'm like, mm -hmm. are you serious? Like I was literally looking for a black hand ringing a doorbell and I could not find it. Um, wow. And I'm said, okay, now I need to recruit artists, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if you go to umbrellastock.com slash, oh boy, um, oh, umbrellastock.com slash passive dash income okay. then you can apply to be a contributor and don't if you say well i'm not a photographer um i do have courses i can work with you we can make it we can have a discussion about it at this point you know so normally when you talk with photographers a lot of them are so uh purist in terms of you have mm -hmm. to use a real camera but listen right. They're shooting feature length films with iPhones. I'm so man, listen, wait, wait. Yeah, let's 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 kind of hang out here for a second. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I get it, man. The gear and all of that stuff. I, I want people to understand that over the last five years, and, and I really try to drill this into people, start where you are with what you have mm -hmm. and know that that is enough. For the moment, hundred percent, right? yeah. And you make the images from your cell phone pay for your big time camera if you want to go that way. Right? If you want to go that way, and and this is my thing. I, I want to make it clear as a photographer who loves the gear, there may be depending on how you shoot, you may never need a DSLR because mm -hmm. that iPhone ten is a beast. You know, wow. and if you have supplemental gear along with that, you can get the job done. Like, I really want to lean more into that for me because I don't always want to take my main camera everywhere I go. Right. So if I have right. my phone, I can get what I need to get. And I know it's quality because phone phone cameras are great now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's I think that piece is and that's why I do a lot of cell phone videos and things of that nature. Why? Because I always got my cell phone with me. And if yeah. I get you used to seeing those kind of videos, now you're not re you're not really conscious of the video quality because I've got you leaned into the actual content. What I'm saying, what I'm teaching. So you're mm -hmm. not you're not saying, well, hey, I can't listen to this because he's not in a he doesn't have a professional background or he does not uh, have a good lighting. It's like, hey, I'm H. Cortez. Here I am, guys. I want to tell you about this financial tip, this, that, and the other. And it creates the ability for you to be consistent, right? Denzel yeah. had a great right. quote in right. one of his right. uh, speeches recently where he says, without commitment, you won't start. Without consistency, you won't finish. Won't finish. Wow. So if you, like you said, just happen to be running to the store and you don't have your gear, but you see something amazing happening, you can take out your phone. And because you're confident in the quality that's going to come out of that phone, you don't miss that moment. Right. Whereas some people will say, dang, man, I wish I had my camera, man, and, and won't think to take their phone out and snap some of that stuff. So I got a story um, about that, man. I got a story about that. Sure, man, please do taking a walk with my son, right? And that that's what I was doing. I wasn't doing anything else. I was taking a walk. It was sunset. So the sun was behind us and there was these long shadows. So I'm holding his hand and we walk and I'm like, oh man, that looks really cool. And I was like, I don't have my camera. And I almost turned around and went back and I said, no, you got a phone, bro. 
So I pulled out my <laughs> phone, snapped the picture, cleaned it up. It sells. You know. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I think I think that is that is one of the things where, um, you know, it, it is one of the things that people can use as a crutch, right? Yeah. And yeah. it's like, oh man, I don't have my stuff, so uh, I'm gonna miss that. But you you've done a, a great thing with the stock images and uh tell us one more time i'm gonna try to put this in the comments here on how people can submit um folks or apply to be one of your contributors right yeah so you want to go to umbrellastock.com forward slash passive dash income because that's what it is <laughs> hey. And, and people don't understand. I want you to uh, also break down. When you say passive income, that means the, the image is on the site. There's a price attached to the image. You don't know who is going to use that image or why. Right. So not only is it passive income, but some people will will wreck their brains trying to figure out the perfect picture. There is no perfect picture when we're marketing. Talk about what kinds of things people can or, or maybe the strangest image that someone has bought from you and you just because you had it, you put it on the site. You didn't know what, what was going to happen. Right. Because I think some people say, well, I've got to now go and manufacture a scene. No, it's not that when you're dealing with stock imagery. Right. So so you can. And there is something to be said for staging, right? Especially if you're doing things ahead of time. Like I, so if you're a contributor, I do send out a mail list and I say, hey, um, like I actually sent out a mail list a few weeks ago talking about the holidays. So it's like, hey, you can go to some type of hobby store, pick up Thanksgiving and Christmas stuff and shoot some things now so people have it ahead of time. But for right. me, probably the oddest things that sell that just make me laugh is the textures. Like if I see a wall or a rug that just looks different and the texture is something I haven't really seen, I literally take a picture of the wall, just the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like I said, it works because sometimes you need that texture as something to put on a website in back of things, you know, or mm -hmm. you need it to. Like if you have like a plain white background or a plain black background, you put the texture on, you turn it down. So now you have that textured background, but it's the color you want it to be. You know, so okay. it's it's really if it catches your attention in a, in a planet with seven billion people, it resonates with someone else, too. It's probably so just gonna catch grab somebody else's attention. And I use it. I use textures all the time when I create my memes. Right. Um, right. And that that is a huge thing that I'm doing. And I do exactly what you said. Uh, I might throw it on the background, uh, reduce the opacity a little bit. And now mm -hmm. I got a nice blend, changes the colors and one texture can be a million different things. Right. right. It's, it's, right. <laughs> it's just crazy. So what we're going to do is we're going to pay some bills real quick, guys. Uh, and then when we come back, uh, he's going to talk about his other creative genius where he and his wife have come together to create ghost readers where they can create audio books for all of my writers out there. If you've got a written work, man, you might want to get with our folks over here at ghostreaders.com. So really quickly, let me show you guys what's going on with uh, our sponsor for the day. Guys, STL Black Biz, ladies and gentlemen, is the premier go-to for um, black businesses in the St. Louis metro area where you want to uh, go and find all of the businesses that you want to do or consciously spend money with. All you got to do is go to STL Black Biz and they have businesses from all industries, all categories. Uh, and it's one of those places where a lot of people are talking about group economics economic empowerment and rebuilding Black Wall Street and all of that stuff. Well, guess what? This is how you do it in the St. Louis area. You go to SEL Black Biz and you shop. You look for the various listings. You go to your category and you find the stuff that you're looking to spend with, right? And you do your search. And it is 
as easy as that, guys. And all of the different companies are going to come up. You're looking for uh, particular things in a particular marketplace. Listen, aroused by art and photography, right? Listen, it's there, stlblackbiz.com. And what I love about stlblackbiz.com is you can get exclusive deals that you can't get even on these companies' websites. Why? Because these companies who submit their listings to STL Black Biz, they are conscious minded as well. So they're going to give you a deal for coming to STL Black Biz. So hopefully you're going to tell others about STL Black Biz and we're going to have a nice uh, a place to go when we're looking for uh, to constantly spend our money in our own communities, guys. So uh, go to the site, STL Black Biz, bookmark the site. And every time you get ready to go out your house and spend a dime, I want you to go to stlblackbiz.com and best believe that the app is on its way so you can take us with you in your uh, cell phone as well. So shout out to my girl, Eliani at stlblackbiz.com. And like I said, if you are a business owner and you have not submitted your business to STL Black Biz, it's a low fee. For the entire year, make sure you go get yourself listed in STL Black Biz. So when people are consciously looking to spend money with black businesses, they will find you. So we were listening to and learning from our special guest, uh, Miche Allen. He is a photographer, uh, but also uh, not only is he a photographer, he's an entrepreneur and he's found creative ways to uh, leverage his talent and create other passive streams of income by doing what it is that he absolutely loves to do. So we're going to continue our conversation with Mr. Misha Allen. So uh, let me go back there. There he is. All right, brother. So we have Umbrella Stock, right? That is uh, stock imagery, a great way to create passive income for artists. And you're actually looking for all other artists to contribute, not only stock images, but video uh, clip art, those kinds of things. And, and I'm sure anything else you can find on any other stock uh, website will ultimately find its way into uh, uh, UmbrellaStock.com uh, as well. But you also partner with your wife to create ghost readers, right? And that's the first time I've ever heard, heard of that. Now, I'm familiar with a ghost writer. Uh, I actually am looking for some ghost writers right now. I got some materials that I don't want to write myself. I, right, I, I've right. gotten so addicted to video that, hey, I can speak it on a video, send it to you. You can polish it up and write it out for me. And then, boom, I've got a best-selling book. So, uh, But I had never heard of ghost readers before. So tell us a little bit about ghost readers. Yeah. So um, again, took a course and it was talking about audio stuff. And and so I talk about photography a lot. Um, but mm -hmm. to be honest, my first love is music. Right. So okay. I've always kind of been acquainted with sound. You know, I'm a singer. So when I took the, the course, um, one thing they talked about was, you know, just using your voice. Again, Dave Anderson taught this course, taught this course about using your voice to make money. And um, talked about a lot of things, but for some reason, the the audiobook narration just really connected with me. And my wife was like, ooh, because we're both readers, you mm -hmm. know? And um, I think what got me was, again, the, the through line with all of my work is proper representation of Black people. And mm -hmm. as a reader, you know, there are things like if you're a Black author, especially if it's fiction or if it's autobiographical, you want a black voice on the audiobook. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it kind of throws it off a little bit. I, I told <laughs> the story before. There's there's this there's this book I saw, and it's about this black woman and her story and her journey. And she'd she'd gone to prison and she got out and changed her life. When I clicked on the sample to listen to it, white guy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because she went to you know the, the ACX clearinghouse and she mm -hmm. did not find a black woman. So she mm -hmm. said, I'm gonna go with the person that sounds the best. And it's like, man, like that that hurts my heart. And we want to make sure that that doesn't happen to other black authors so that their story gets told the way they want it to get told. Right. Yeah, and that's that's powerful. And and really if that's one of the 
reasons that I do this platform and I want to introduce as many different entrepreneurs to our community as as we can because we we know uh scripture says where two or three are gathered in my name there I am right well that's also the mastermind principle so you and I are talking about stock photo and talking about uh ghost reading somebody else is going to take and get something completely different and they're going to be able to run with it and they're going to fill a void that we need to have filled right. and that's important because we talk about buy black 24 7 365 but the fact of the matter is black isn't everywhere just yet right right, right. and that's one of the things that i like about building this platform is who knew a black um stock photo company existed and now we do right? right and hopefully my audience is going to go and share this out so that when you need stock images you're going to go who knew like you said the young lady how many authors out there uh self-published and and traditionally published have great works but they don't have or didn't know of ghost readers to right. have a voice telling their story and you talking about making money with your voice man and my son is a singer uh beautiful baritone uh and i'm like man there's there's other ways and if you're trying to make it into the music industry there's other ways other things that you can do and i think about james earl jones i think about being yeah. and arby's right. right now we have the meat right yes yeah. <laughs> 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 that's being rain's voice right uh yep. But we ain't seen Vean Rains in a movie in a while, but mm -hmm. every day, 40 times a day, we hear that <laughs> voice. Yes, right? sir. So we're talking about being creative and monetizing your art, monetizing your gift. Um, I heard um, Bishop T.D. Jakes on a video, and I, I posted often on my page where he talks about having multiple streams. And he said, some people don't have the best face, but they have beautiful hands. So companies will pay millions of dollars to put their rings on their hands. There's so many things that you could do if you just open your mind to the creative process. So how have things been going for you and your wife? Have you guys done any joint projects together yet? Uh, reading kind of like a duet and, and a singer, or do you just kind of, you take the male voice on a male book, she does the female voice for a female author? So for the most part, uh, to be honest, uh, I'm the DJ. My wife is an MC for the most part. So my wife does actually the majority of the reading and then I do the engineering, you know, since okay. I'm most comfortable with that because, you know, we use um, audio, uh, audio software and everything, even though okay. she can. That's like my space, you know. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's that's what we do a lot of. We've done. We've done a few books. And, and again, back to the whole passive income thing. That's what I love about books. You know, you can we can either do it outright or we can set it up so that we get royalties from reading it. You know, and my thing is I want to build something that makes money when I'm not there, you know. Right. Um, and then, you know, additionally, other voice services like if you're a business, um, you want professional sounding voicemail, you know, or an IVR system. You know, those things we can do or a podcast intro. You know, you want yeah. I love yours. You know what I mean? That's, like that's where I was just going. I, I so I did that myself. So I'm gonna need the ghost readers to come hook me up with some good and now coming back to the Cortez right. show. And listen, I've got five different podcasts. Seriously. Oh, wow. yeah. um, and and um again, these are things that people are not traditionally thinking about in terms of income and revenue. As a marketer, I'll tell you, Michelle, as a marketer, my wife hates this because my mind never turns off, right? And I see marketing happening everywhere. Like we were watching, I don't know if you're familiar with um, The Equalizer, Denzel Washington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right? this, this renegade guy and he, he's doing, doing all this stuff. So part one was good, but in part two, I was just, it, it fascinates me that there is a character in the movie that nobody realizes is the character, and that's the storm. 
So throughout the whole movie, there's this storm building up. And at the end of the movie, the whole fight scene at the end is in the middle of a hurricane. Okay. So when yeah. I watched it the first time, Miche, I was like, man, that's cool. They fighting in a hurricane. But I watched it the second time and the third time. Then I start seeing the story in the, uh, the storm in the beginning of the movie. And I'm like, mm. man, somebody got paid to bring this character to life throughout this whole movie. Wow. And people don't see those things. If I'm a singer, all I can see is being the next Beyonce or John Legend. Right. That's it. You, you don't see all of the other places that song jingles and that kind of stuff is being used. So I definitely need some help with uh, some voiceover stuff for the various podcasts that I have. My girl, Angela uh, Alexander Double A from growwithdoubleA.com says, I would love to be a ghost reader, right? Uh, that That's something that um, I'm sure uh, down the road, Miche will be coaching on and helping people get into oh, that. Oh, we're doing it now. We're doing it now. If that's what you want. Go, go to our site, ghostreaders.com. You can sign up and then you can also, while you're there, you can get on our calendar and, and we can we can work with you on that. Nice, nice, nice. So let me uh, drop the link for ghostreaders.com. All you can do is, Angela, go and uh, drop your uh, name and email address into the um, form and get yourself started. You can also yeah, connect with moving. them on their Facebook and Twitter. Uh, let me actually just show you what that looks like. So when you guys go over to ghostreaders.com, this is what it's going to look like. There's a short video that plays. Put your name and email address in there and get started. Or if you want to connect with them via Facebook and Twitter, you can do that as well. Talk about a few other things that you guys do with your voices to make money. Because, again, I want other artists to see that there's, I mean, like I said, my son has that deep voice. People always say, well, of course, it is. you sound like you should be on the radio. Uh, <laughs> I was like, well, OK. So I started podcasting. <laughs> right. Right. But but talk about a few other things that people probably don't think about when they when they think about using their voice to make money. Right. So one thing and not, not quite, but we do um, have a so a lot of people use when they're, especially when they're first starting, they're not going to spend hundreds of dollars on audio software. A lot of people just use Audacity. I'm sure you've heard of that, right? Yeah, yeah it's free. So at this point, we are actually selling an Audacity template for $6.99. You could actually wow. record your stuff in Audacity and run this and it'll make you sound super clean. Now we also, we have um, uh, templates for Logic as well as GarageBand too. So if mm -hmm. you use those, basically you can record it nice and flat and then the template will make it sound bigger and better. You know, so that takes the if that's not your thing, you're like, look, I'm not a tech guy, but I got to get this stuff recorded. We have the thing that you can put your voice on top of and it sounds nice and professional. And man, let me say, man, let me tell you something, brother. Um, so with this podcast, you know what I'm going to do when it's over? I'm going <laughs> to audio from the video and it's going straight to my podcast. So you're telling me that for six dollars and ninety five cents, I can have a template that once I have the audio. I can now run it through, clean it up, fatten it out, make it sound very good, then upload it to my podcasting host. And, and now I have a more perfect. So you're going to do me a good voiceover. You're going to do me some return to breaks and some all of that kind of stuff. And I'm going to be able to put all of that onto a template. And listen, bro. You weren't supposed to say that. That's we, we, I'm, I'm, I'm going to resell that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to resell that uh, as part of my podcast coaching program. Uh, <laughs> but, right, right. You know, that that's amazing, brother. And 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 this is what when I say take your gift, your talent, your experience, your passion, or your expertise. Right. See, that's an expertise. Hey, I've been doing this music thing and engineering for so long that I can create a template and one of the most popular audio softwares and make you sound good. Right. And I can create another passive. That's an expertise. You right. created the template one time and you can pop those six ninety nines off like nobody's business. Right. That's what artists got to understand. Mm -hmm. um, I want If you're taking notes on this show, I want you to write something down that I got from Trevor Otts over at Black CEO. He said, there's more in what you know 
than what you do. There's more in what you know than what you do. You know how to engineer. Now, you can act, I can hire you and you can come and engineer some work for me, but there's only so much engineering you can do in a day. Exactly. exactly. But how many of those templates can you sell in a day? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because you've taken what you know and you put it in a form and commoditized it. And now you can just sell that thing 24, 7, 365 and, and you ain't got to pick up another um, uh, 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 engineering and sit behind another board a day of your life if you didn't want to. Right. Exactly. So that's powerful, powerful stuff, man. So what else you got going on, brother? You got a lot of stuff in, the, in, in, your, in your bag of tricks, man. I, I might need some more of your services, man. Talk to the people. Man, I got all these kids. I got to feed these kids. So I got, I got to figure this thing out. So, <laughs> so um, one thing that um, I, and, and this is, you know, honestly, primarily due to, you know, the pandemic and everybody being on punishment and in the house. Um, mm -hmm. I'm like, because here's the thing, as much as I want to make money doing what I do, I love photography, you know, so mm -hmm. not being able to do it, hurts my feelings a little bit, you know? Right. So I did some homework, did some research and I'm like, Hey, I can do virtual photo shoots, you know? And I, whereas I can do, and it doesn't, it really, honestly doesn't matter what it is. But one thing I want to focus on, at least for, for your people is if you're not, first of all, if you're not on LinkedIn, what are you doing? Cause if you're in business, that's where the money is. You know, that's mm. what business people are. I know, you know, we spend a lot of time on Facebook and Instagram and that's cool. But the people on LinkedIn are looking for someone to spend money with. Like their thing is, listen, I have to spend ten thousand dollars a month. I'm going to spend it. Am I going to spend it with you? Right. So mm. LinkedIn is definitely where you want to be. So if you're on LinkedIn, you need um, a proper headshot. So out of all the things I do, I'm definitely a headshot photographer. Like that's, I shoot tons of headshots. So I've gotten to the point where I'm pretty good at it. So I mm -hmm. actually can do a virtual headshot session with you. So um, what I'm doing, so what I normally do with, with my headshots is you get three edits, right? Um, what I'll do for the Cortez Hustle family is I'll throw in two additional. So you get five wow. images when we shoot, you know. Uh, and oh, well, nice. wait a minute. Let me, let me run that back. Let me run, run that back. back. Run it back. Run, run it back. that back. Yeah. For the Cortez Hustle Show audience, normally you get three edits, but you're gonna get five. Let me help you guys from a marketing standpoint understand why that is important. Because a, you're going to ultimately pick one of those as your brand. And I teach people when you're branding. Your image is part of your brand. So you're going to use that same image for at least two years on everything, all your packaging, your Facebook, uh, your coverage, your, your Instagram, your LinkedIn. That becomes part of your deal. But then you want a slightly different uh, variation of that on your website. Maybe uh, you want to remove the background and use and create memes and all of that kind of stuff, man. Right. So uh, right. that's huge to have a solid headshot and a few different variations where people can easily recognize it's you, but you can use it in a, a variety of, of different ways. So I, I love that. Uh, and you can do this all virtually, correct? Yes, I can do it virtually, you know, so I coach you through it and we get it done um, because so, so the, the thing as a photographer, it's not just the gear, it's my understanding of light. So mm -hmm. I don't have to be in the room to be able to read the light and understand what's going on and get a quality image. Gotcha. Gotcha. I love it. I love it. And, and you just going to bust me out in front of everybody. I've got to go clean up my LinkedIn profile because uh, yes. uh, I haven't been on LinkedIn, brother, in five years, uh, to be quite honest. Uh, but these are some some great uh, uh, pieces. But when, when it comes to LinkedIn, you are 100 uh, percent correct. And um, not only do I have the financial health mentor brand, but I also have the Thornton online marketing brand, which is more B2B type stuff. And that's okay. definitely the place for B2B uh, LinkedIn for, for certain. So I know I've got to clean up uh, that profile and um, put my offerings out there on LinkedIn. Uh, brother, it has been a I got one more thing for your people too. drop it, drop it, drop it. One more thing. So with ghost readers um, now, of course, you can get your book read. But one thing we also offer is micro reads. So mm. we'll do 500 words for you, right? For 
a much less price than it would cost to do the whole audio book. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing for Cortez Hustle folks is if you buy one, we'll give you a second micro read for free. And what's great about this is now you can give people a taste of your book because if you got a paper book or an ebook or a hardcover mm -hmm. book or something like that, it's hard. What are you going to do? Hey, man, read this real quick. Let me know if you like it. <laughs> no, you can stick them 500 words right in their ear and, and make sure it's at a point where they want to know well, well, what, what happens next. Yeah. I, I, you yeah. didn't give me the thing. So now I got to get the whole book, you know, and yeah. you don't have the audio book. Yeah, you create, value. Leave you're you're creating marketing up. material. You're creating yeah. marketing materials for yourself. So, yeah, again, ghostreaders.com, reach out. We're happy to help you with that. Awesome. I, I absolutely love it, man. Um, again, it, it's I hope you guys are taking notes and getting value from this. And I know we're talking about a, a specific discipline in the arts, but this goes across all disciplines. If you're a sculptor, you do things with your hands. Chances are there's things you can do with your hands that you never thought about doing that can make you some money mm -hmm. and support your family and your art. Uh, and things of that nature. We talked about doing things with your voice, right? We talk about doing things. If you're a model, there's so many different ways that you can model. Model is just not runway, y'all. You understand that every time you see a picture of a human being anywhere, they are a model. You, right. you understand that? You see a picture of somebody's hand with a ring, that's a hand model. You see a picture of somebody's foot and some sandals, that's a foot model. Guys, there's so many things that you can do. So really quickly, tell everybody how they can connect with you, brother. Yes, sir. So for my photography, I am a, at A Sharp Photo everywhere on social media. And of course, A Sharp Photo biz um, for the stock imagery. I am at Umbrella Stock Inc everywhere. Um, and of course, like I said, I am looking for contributors for that photographers as well as artists um, and illustrators. And for Ghost Readers, we are at Ghost Readers Inc. everywhere, you know. So, yeah. yeah. I love it, love it, love it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, when we come back on the other side of this break, uh, I'm going to talk about why I love video marketing and the four main reasons that you should love it too and at least incorporate it into your brand. Uh, Miche, it was a plum pleasing uh, pleasure, brother. Uh, thanks for the gifts that you're throwing in for uh, my listenership. And I want to make sure that I link to all of that stuff. Uh, and if there's a discount code or whatever, then let me know uh, and we'll get that um, out to the people as just well. Let me know, just let me know you saw me on, on the Cortez, Cortez Hustle show. That'll do it. There we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So really quickly, for those of you who um, are not familiar with STL, um, um, STLBlackBiz.com. I want you guys to make sure that you go and check it out, right? What is STL Black Biz? STL Black Biz is the business directory for black businesses in the St. Louis area. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a business and you are not listed on STLBlackBiz.com, go get yourself listed. We are in a space right now that there has never been more people conscious about circulating the dollar within our community than we are right now. You want to be found. Yeah, there is a small fee to be listed in the SEL Black Biz directory, but you get listed for the whole year. You get featured spots. There's a whole lot that comes with this. The app is currently being developed. So you want to go to SEL Black Biz and get yourself listed as a black business owner. Now, here's the other thing. If you are conscious about circulating the black dollar, we hear that one trillion dollars at 1.1, 1.7, it changes all the time. Whatever that amount is, guys, there's a huge amount of money that we spend as consumers. We want you to be able to go to a place, if you're in the St. Louis area, and find local businesses that you can spend money with. So SCLBlackBiz.com, go there to find businesses to patronize. But if you are a business, make sure you go check out SCL Black Biz and get yourself listed on that directory. So really quickly, I'm going to run through this quick. Why do I love 
video marketing so much? And why should you be using video marketing in your business, right? Number one, there is no faster way to build authority than video, right? Remember, people don't buy from businesses. People buy from people, right? So you want to be able to build authority and create a connection. And there's nothing like doing that with video, right? So number one, you get to build your authority. Number two, people buy from people they know, like, and trust, right? How do I get you to know me? Via video, having a conversation with you like very much like what I'm doing right now. How do I get you to uh, like me? Well, I, I show you who I am. I show you the dynamics of my personality and I, I can talk to you about the things that I'm passionate about and you can see that come through on video. How do I get you to trust me? By educating you, by sharing with you information that you could apply and get a desired result. Now you say, hey, Cortez said this, I did it. It worked exactly the way he said it was going to work. Now I can trust what he says. So I build that no like and trust factor with you via video. Number three, the other reason that you should be using video in your marketing is because from video, I can get all the other forms of how we communicate. We communicate via the written word. We communicate via audio, we communicate via video, and we communicate via pictures. Well, guess what? I can listen to this audio right now, and I'm thinking of pictures. I can send this audio to Miche, and he's thinking of pictures that could go with what I'm saying, right? I can take this audio, and I can send it to a site like Rev.com or Timmy.com, and they'll transcribe it. Now I have the written word from this particular video, right? Of course, if I didn't like to be on video, then I could actually turn my camera off and then uh, you guys could just hear me talking without being on camera. And I'm still using my voice to build that no like and trust factor. Maybe I've got some images that I'm using and I'm creating content in a way that people love to consume it. Right. And then, of course, I could uh, the written word the spoken word, and of course, the full video. Uh, And then number four, last but not least, when you're using video in your marketing, when it's done correctly, you're basically creating a sales machine that works for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you are not using a platform like StreamYard that's got me streaming to Facebook and YouTube, at the exact same time, two different YouTube channels, this is going on right now as we speak, and two different Facebook pages is going on right now as we speak. The Cortez Hustle Show page, the Financial Health Mentor page, and the Cortez Hustle Show YouTube channel and the Financial Health Mentor YouTube channel at the same time. And it's going to live there forever, right? And people are going to be able to go there, watch this stuff. They're going to be able to connect with Miche, get some of his products and services based on this piece of content living forever. So if you are not using video in your marketing, my friend, you are missing out on some amazing opportunities to grow and explode your brand. So hopefully, guys, you got as much enjoyment out of us chatting with uh, Miche as I did. Uh, Start using video marketing in your uh, advertising. Also, if you have a business product or service and you want to get it out there to the people, uh, consider sponsoring one of the podcasts, either the St. Louis Hustle podcast, the Cortez Hustle show. uh, Also, um, uh, Hustle and Love is a show for couples. So you can sponsor any of these podcasts. We do our best to get you 10,000 views on the different uh, outputs that come from sponsoring one of our shows. So if you want to uh, become a show sponsor, all you got to do is connect with me. Uh, We'll talk about pricing and how all of that works. So I appreciate you guys all for tuning in. Until we talk to you next time, we want you to get your money up because you absolutely can do it. But more importantly, you deserve to do it each and every single one of you. Now, hustle up.